Well, welcome everybody. It's Steve, a thousand year home. Yesterday was uh, cold and windy. It tore everything up. It was so windy. So I didn't do much work. Uh, I had a birthday party too and a work escalation and it's still an ongoing escalation. So I'll have to work on that. My work escalation, I mean how I make my day, how my day job. <laughs> Not my building of the house, but it's a quiet Sunday. The animals are fed. I'm going to continue on with uh, this log, getting it up in the roof. So I've marked out <clears throat> where the uh, post will be. I marked this. I'm going to drill this out, make it a little deeper so that the post can slide up in it and then slide back down and fit the socket. And uh, I think I'll just use glue as the uh, in this socket rather than worry about a screw. These will be screwed to the walls and to the frame. I'm not worried about those. I think it'll be pretty tight. Now, this is heavy, so I'm a bit concerned getting it up into the air and mounted at the top of the uh, shipping container roof, which, uh, you know, it's nine foot, but I have an extra foot, couple, two feet here. So I got to get a 120-pound, 150-pound log up uh, 12 feet in the air. Right and mount it up there. So uh, if I get all of the uh, all of the cutting done, I'm going to have to get out the fork truck, rig up some kind of a strapping system where I don't get hit in the head, and uh, clamp this to the roof while I do that work. But I'm pretty excited. So I uh, I treated this entire log with wood preservative, um, and of course I can't find it in the wind. It blew the little empty thing. I was <laughs> I was gonna do a gonna do a little video on the stuff and the wind took it away. So I'll order some more uh, on that. And I'm pretty happy with the results and that ought to keep the wind away. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these, uh, you know, so uh, leave them rough, but I, I think I'll put a cedar oil uh, surface treatment on everything when I'm done. All right, without further ado, let me get my drills and let's start working on cutting that out. All right, so I obviously want this post to be at the same angle as the wall so I'm gonna try a string on that do a little string thing see if that gives me a couple of strings will give me the guides that I'm after I just want the same angle if I'm off you know I can already see there's a little twist in that one I'll have to work harder at the door jam than I originally planned. Let's do one more line on each one of these. I think that'll give me the angle for the drill as I drill through it. Plus, it'll the strings will give up a little bit so I can drill down on it and the string will not be in the way. Because these are rough cut lumber, each post is a slightly different dimension. So I'm going to get to the point where the posts that are going into the pockets, I have to measure those out. So this particular post template, I want to make sure matches the post that will be the middle. The middle post has a 30 second more all the way around it. So... Uh, And if this socket ends up being a little big, then I've got uh, cedar shims that I'll pound down in and cut off. And that will be draw that up tight, ultimately. All right, I like that. So these strings are just for me as a reference. So I know as I drill into a rounded shape, uh, I know uh, that I'm still on the right dimensions. The drill bits that I'm using are 20 years old, <laughs> they have seen a lot of things, so I don't know if it's going to start smoking. This one felt a little hot. Alright, so all I'm doing is keeping the drill in the same angle as the string as I go down into there. And I'll come in with a chisel and clean it up.
All right, I figured out how to get this put together without having to put it on the floor. That middle post is the right distance of a room two, even, to the roof. So what I'm gonna do is just trim these a little bit, put a tape around them so that I can feed them in, strap them all in, and once they're all in, I'll run up. screws through the top so that I can adjust it up and down, and I'll get them all the same height double check and then hopefully there's not a knot or anything weird but I'll take care of that when I get there and uh, I think that'll do it let's go ahead and do that and I think if I just get a little taper going on this and I'll be able to get these wedged down in there mark them all at 102 and cut the bottoms and then put that sill plate on it See, that's the hardship of working with rough cut lumber you know I put a template post in there and you know they're anywhere between actually a quarter inch to a 30 second out very seldom from board to board to board are they true and every one of those the template boards fit right in with the actual board timber doesn't so it'll take me a little bit to fine-tune it get it put together but I'll get there Well, I got it together, and I'm an inch short. <laughs> no, not really, because uh, you see, that's a two, one by a two by board. So 
I'll just shim them up and force them up with shims, which was part of my plan. But it is what it is. I think what my measuring where I went wrong is I measured a straight when I should have calculated that curve. But uh, it'll be all right. Uh, it really honestly will. I'll get one inch out of there and shim that up. It'll look great. Nobody will even notice. You won't even see the shims. So, let's start making some final measurements. And to be honest, a little short is better, just a little, like a half inch all the way around, than one end sticking out by an inch and I have to pull it back down and redo it. So a little short and then I'm going to shim it up and you won't even see it when I'm done because there'll be drywall and trim and all that good stuff. But it can't be surprising. just getting me just getting me cedar fever season and that'll wear you out Texas is tough y'all really is